just on the Indian batting lineup I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, could have been, do you look at a Surya Kumar Yadav now, or you go in with a Shreya Sayari, showed some good form too. You're happy with the decision that India has made? And if you are to bring Surya, maybe later half of the tournament is some place that you'll look at? Uh, yes, I think, well, I mean, that's a great option to have somebody like mm -hmm. a Surya Kumar Yadav. Uh, but Shreya Sayar is the guy who's been, who's, we've seen score hundreds. Mm. And at number four, you want somebody who's going to score hundreds. If you're looking at somebody at five or six, that is where you might look at maybe a Surya Kumar Yadav. But at, at, in the top four, you want guys who will go on to get hundreds. Mm. Uh, Surya Kumar Yadav has got a hundred in T20 cricket as well. So I'm not saying he doesn't get hundreds. But the kind of batting that we have seen from Surya Kumar Yadav in ODIs so far, does not guarantee that he will get you that 100. Therefore, I think Shreya is getting the nod ahead of him. is not a surprise as far as I'm concerned. Mm, all right, so Shreya Sayer is playing. Just running you through that playing 11 once again uh, for India. You could see it on your screens right now. The openers, there's a big change if you're just joining us live right now. That Shubman Gill has still not recovered. Rohit Sharma points that out. So you've got Ishan Kishan and it's pretty much certain now looking at the team sheet that Ishan Kishan is going to be opening with Rohit Sharma and then you've got pretty much a settled middle order in Virat Kohli followed by Shreya Sahir followed by KL Rahul and then Hardik Pandya and then comes in your all-rounders as well as your bowlers in Ravindra Jadeja then Ravi Chandran, Ashwin and then your uh, Kuldeep Yadav followed by the two fast bowlers in Mohammed, uh, beg your pardon, Mohammed Siraj and Jaspreet Bumrah. I'm just uh, looking at Ravi Chandran Ashwin uh, making it to the 11th Sunny. What an incredible last few days it must be for him. Because if you rewind back to maybe a year, two years, in fact, last four years, hardly been part of any white ball cricket for India. You thought that India has moved on in white ball cricket. Of course, he remains a champion in test match cricket. That's another matter that he did not play the WTC final. And then, not only does he make it to the squad last moment because of a few injury, makes it to that 11. Incredible. Incredible. And that's what sometimes fate uh, has in store for you. And I think, uh, you know, maybe there are big things in, uh, uh, to be expected of him now, now that he's got the opportunity. He is the kind of cricketer who relishes a challenge. He wants a challenge. This is the challenge for him to show that he belongs over here. That whatever had happened earlier on, whatever the reason he was not thought of as being part of the squad, not just 11, part of the squad, that's it. He's the kind of cricketer who will have forgotten what, what, what has gone past. For him, this is a challenge. He will be already thinking how to use this opportunity so that he cannot be dropped mm -hmm. in this tournament. Maybe after that, another matter. In this tournament, he will play in every game. That's what he'll be looking to do in this game. Mm, okay, uh, let's also run you through the Australian 11. We have that graphic now ready. Uh, we'll have it on our screens right now. And just take a look at the balance of this team. You start with the openers. Uh, you've got uh, David Warner and Mitchell Marsh as the openers. Uh, then you go down that uh, batting order. And number three, uh, you know, just like India have Virat Kohli. Uh, the mainstay of their batting at number three. You tend to see that, uh, that fulcrum for every team at number three. And no surprise that Australia have got Steve Smith uh, coming in at number three. Then you look at Manas Labushain. We were just talking about Ravi Chandran Ashwin making it to that 15 and making it to the 11. Similar story for Labushain as well because he was not considered earlier to be part of that 15-member squad. Makes it to that 15-member squad. And then a few injuries, especially to head. And then he makes it to that... Uh, 11 as well. Then you are getting into the all-rounders. You can see Cameron Green's name here, but I have a feeling that before Cameron Green comes out to bat, uh, at number 5, you will actually have Glenn Maxwell. He's a destructive batter, also chips in with the bowling. So you will have Maxwell bat higher up at 5. Then you might have an Alex Carey, followed by a Cameron Green. So that's your top 7, which looks very, very good. And then comes the captain in Pat Cummins. We've seen him win a lot of games with the bat, uh, especially in the IPL. You've seen him uh, win from hopeless situations, take his team across the finish line. So then coming, the captain comes in at number 8. And then you have the bowlers in Zampa, Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood. In fact, many would point out that Stark himself can tonk a few and is a handy batter than batting at number nine. So one thing that really stands out in that 11 that you're seeing on your screen right now is the batting depth that they have. Uh, having said that, Zaima, you were talking about Stoinis. That's going to be a big miss for them. Uh, Travis Head, also another miss because we saw his form just leading into the World Cup. Now, unfortunately, he's injured, but was outstanding for them. And also a left-handed option that always, mm. you know, 
is, is, is a big uh, problem for all the fielding captains because suddenly you've got to change the field around. Suddenly your, your bowlers have to look at the change in line from leg stump to off stump again. Those kind of things. So clearly I think that's going to be a big miss as well. And of course the kind of batting that we've seen from him in recent times. Earlier on he was more a stodgy player looking for ones and twos. In the last couple of years he's become a more attacking player. And he's, he's t taken that form into test cricket as well as uh, one-day cricket. Mm. Last couple of questions, Sainway, before we wrap up our program. One, just before this game, these two teams played a series. So they know each other's strengths and weaknesses. In that particular series, India looked like the dominant side. Should we pay heed to that or you should just forget about it? Because once the World Cup starts, uh, Australia is a completely different kettle of fish. Yes. I mean, those, those were matches where it was more like a sparring, uh, you know, session mm. rather than a full-blown, you know, bout. And I think this is going to be the real thing. So be prepared for some fireworks, both, uh, you know, with bad Paul and maybe a little bit of, you know, chirping on the field. But I think this is what uh, cricket is all about. And particularly from these two teams, I think uh, in recent time, the rivalry between India and Australia mm. has been much looked forward to. And because it's produced, you know, some great cricket, wonderful cricket, batting, bowling, fielding, we've seen that. And I don't see any, any uh, exception in this game as well. I'm looking forward to this game because I think we're going to get to see some outstanding cricket. Okay. Uh, finally, we want you to look into the crystal ball and, and kind of give us a prediction. What do you reckon uh, would be a total that Australia get to, considering it's a spin-friendly track? And then do India chase that down or not? Don't tell us Afghanistan is going to win the game. As you said. <laughs> no, I, think, I think on the surface, uh, batting first, uh, maybe Australia uh, can be restricted, can be restricted uh -huh. to about 260 or thereabouts. Uh -huh. And uh, I think India can then, you know, bat accordingly. Uh, bat according to the situation, according to the conditions on offer. 260 would be that total. That's how I feel Australia could get to based on the conditions as well as the bowling lineup that India has. And then India, 260, 70 is sort of a total that India have championed uh, when it comes to chasing in white ball cricket. That's the kind of batting lineup that they have.